I am not here to motivate you. I've prayed before I came here. I prayed that some people need depression, may they live depressed. Some people need hope, may they find the hope in this conversation. Some need to be driven, may they find it in this conversation. Some people need to give up. In 30 years time, something massive is going to happen across the world. I'm going to speak to you about that thing. I'm going to speak to you about your role in that thing. And then most importantly, I'm going to share with you some of the realities that we challenge you as young people today. And then hopefully you can make something out of that. As a young person growing up in Africa, you have a high propensity to turn out average than to turn out exceptional. In fact, most likely, you are going to turn out a nobody. You live, you live in a world, though, that is going to support you to pretend that a lot of what is against you are not against you. Most of the people you know are foolish. Most of your friends are very foolish. You will be stunned at how much foolishness you radiate as well. As African young people, you are endangered species. A lot of the young people around you in the world are not working within the reality that you are working with. And then, unfortunately, you live in a society whose reality is upside down. In Nigeria, believe it or not, get angry or not, we don't walk straight like this. Oh, don't get it wrong, we look like we are walking straight. We look like we are looking straight. But when you get close to the quality of our thinking, when you go close to the weight of our character, you see that, really, we don't walk straight. This is how we walk. And that's not something peculiar to us as Nigerians. That's something peculiar to most African societies. So part of the conversation should be that how exactly should we navigate? What exactly are we dealing with? Because people are not poor in Africa because they are not determined. Determination is simply not a strategy. People are not poor because they are not angry enough. People are angry. As a matter of fact, let me tell you, I'm completely depressed at times and burdened when I have to hold the microphone in front of young people to talk to you about success. If you talk to people about success, you, you, you have to be ideological at a level. You can get away with talking about success in some countries that I know in the world. But when you talk about success in third world Africa, there are some basic things you need to understand. Otherwise, you are unknowingly, sincerely permitting a cycle of retrogression that you as the convener of that message need to understand. So I'm not the guy that is going to tell you to succeed. As a matter of fact, I don't pray that some people succeed. A young man came to me the other day and he asked me, he told me what he wants to do this year. He's going to buy a car this year. He's going to do this this year. He's going to do that this year. When it was done, I said, may you never do it. And because I'm a person of faith, I ended it well by saying in Jesus' name. It was important that I say that. When I said it, he was angry and he felt, ah, oh, pastor, you are cursing me. I said, I'm not cursing you at all. I know you. And even in your poverty, your nuisance value is so huge that you have pretty much become something close to a virus. To empower you with resources is a self-initiated attack against the society. You are better poor because in your poverty, your nuisance is contained. Stay with me, please. Stay with me, please. Because already, you have a penis that knows how to get hard and run around innocent girls who are vulnerable. And a penis is not a factor of production. Land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, you can't find penis there. Breast, back, all of that are not factors of production. I tell young people, at some point in your life, you have to grow to know that your weakest assets are the things everybody can see on you. And that your most critical assets are invisible and intangible. For example, the quality of your thinking. For example, the, the strength of your character. I don't know about you, but I've seen handsome fools before. I've seen very beautiful dummies. I've seen six foot tall, broad chested drifters. 
And what is easy is to recognize yourself and give yourself names that you choose. But the society to agree with you on the names you give yourself will require another level of articulation. Am I talking to you? And so part of what you need to know is that you don't need anger. You don't need a lot of determination. A lot of what you call motivation at times is a license to keep yourself average and mediocre. I am not here to motivate you. I've prayed before I came here. I pray that some people need depression, may they live depressed. Some people need hope, may they find the hope in this conversation. Some need to be driven, may they find it in this conversation. Some people need to give up. You know, I think it is pure intellectual arrogance for somebody to take a microphone, come in front of 2,000 people, and tell all of them, don't give up. Come on, how do you do that? I mean, people do that, but I'm never able to put my hand around it. How can you tell 2,000 people? I mean, you can tell one person in a one face-to-face -face conversation, having diagnosed, because you and I know that it is a quack doctor that will go ahead to prescribe anything without the preceding privilege, sorry, before the privilege of diagnosis. And so you have not diagnosed 2,000 people and then you just come hold the microphone because you are pumped up by a skill called motivation and then you have acquired one certification called life coaching and then you can just appear in front of 2,000 people or because you have been able to read a Bible and pick up a microphone in a church or you have been able to sit in front of some people in a small mosque and, and spend your time in one book, probably the Bible or the Quran. Therefore, you have earned your rights to fool yourself and to fool everybody. So at times, you have to come to a place and sit down and say that society is not your responsibility. And so I think that the term, don't give up, is something you deploy in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. When you hold the microphone before the majority, some of them need to give up. They need to give up on a friend. Some of them need to give up on a neighborhood. Some of them need to give up on a geography. Some of them need to give up on an ideology or a philosophy. Some of them need to give up on a relationship. Some of them need to give up on some ideas. Some of them need to give up on some businesses. Let me tell you something. There's time for everything. Even the Bible says there's time to hold on and the time to give up as lost. Giving up is a skill. You have to know when and, when and how to give up. If all you know how to do is to hold on, you will hold on to what God is not backing up. You will hold on to what does not have the elasticity to expand. You will hold on no doubt because you are an adult and you have the freedom to hold on to what you want. However, you will hold on to what you want, but you will not give up because you chose not to give up. But it's only a matter of time. Once you hold on to what cannot stretch, you will give up the ghost. And you will give up the ghost without your permission and without the permission of anybody. The idea is all ideas cannot grow. Do you understand? And so there are people in your life who are draining you. And you may need to start from there. Too many people say they are in a relationship. You are not in a relationship most times. You are in a sucky soccer game where somebody is the sucky and somebody is the soccer. And both of you are draining each other on a daily basis and pretending to be friends. Are you here? Listen to me. Listen to me. One of the biggest words is one of the most uncommon phrases in the world today. And that is the word I used earlier, nuisance value. And people, come, people demonstrate this value with confidence. Have you met confidence ignorance before? Confident ignorance. The idea that you know nothing, but you are not aware. So you carry your ignorance with a lot of class, with a lot of, with a lot of style and swag, but you know nothing actually. I was like that. And I used to move around with a lot of confidence, but I was just carrying nothing around. And it took me a lot of years in pain for me to come to a point of humility to take a second look at the things I have believed. So the question is, why do you want to succeed? Success is not an advantage. Do you know Africans have too many successful people? That's what I believe. Ah, but we don't. We have so many poor people. I agree with you. But when you look at the number of successful people that we have, compared to the poverty that we have, you will be stunned that Africa is not really poor because of the absence of capacity. Africa is poor because of the wrong deployment and the abuse of capacity. 
And so we have so many successful people, few as they are, compared to great people that we need. Now hard work can make you successful, but only sacrifice can make you great. Hard work can make you a good lawyer, but only sacrifice can make you a lawyer like Nelson Mandela. You see, hard work can make you an incredible whatever, maybe a medical doctor, maybe anything, but to be the champion of the people, to be the one shaping culture, and shaping culture positively, and leading transformation at a level that society can be grateful for. You have to transcend the limits of success. Success for me is not different from skills, like planning, like goal setting, like project management. Those kind of skills, that's how I see these things, you know? And then when you go deeper and you look at it, by the time somebody knows how to plan, it seems like an advantage. But without a why, he knows how to plan. Without a meaning why he wants to plan. Then he can know how to plan and plan to rob a bank. If he knows how to set a goal, he can set a goal to sleep with your wife. It's still goal setting. It takes a lot of planning and goal setting to be a successful arm robber. Arm robbers are superior project managers. I hope you know. A skill is like a gun. You can kill an antelope with it and fill your family, or you can kill human beings with it. A skill is like the internet. You can do research that will turn the world upside down for good, or you can browse porn all day long. The internet is not a problem. The gun is not a problem. Success is not a problem. But when you add it up and you look at the weight of stress in the system and the weight of pain and struggle in the system, you have to take a second look at success. And so this young man that came to me, because I didn't forget, that said, I'm going to succeed this year. I'm going to buy a car this year. I said, without money, you are already a stress to all our girls. By the time you have money, you are going to be more than a stress. You are going to be a pain to all our girls. And so, how do you say a man is successful because he passed the test of economics, but he fails that of meaning and essence? How do you do that? How do you pretend that it's not true? Young girls, how do you define your models? How do you sit here today and pretend that some of the people who stand, who you respect, who are out there, if you get close to them, are going to give you something that interests you, but are going to take something from you as well? Why do you pretend? You're foolish at times. And then you wonder why you are where you are and why there is a history of poverty in your family so that when you do well and you buy a good car and you live in 1004 or somewhere in the you, what have you done? You've paid a high price with your body and somewhere along the line, the character of your foolishness will form a reputation capital that will trail you into your twilight years. This, your breast will not be jumping like this forever. You are not, you are not a mom. You stop breastfeeding people everywhere. You need to calm down. I said, some people are so poor, all they have is money. Hmm? Some people are so wretched that all they have is money. Take that money away, they are as empty as an empty can of Coke. Nothing else inside of them. I'm tired of successful people, man. We need successful people whose value impact directly on GDP and per capita income. When we have those kind of guys on the ground, then we have people who are ready to change the game. We don't need successful people, we need game changers. We need guys with big ideas. Never forget, it is the passion of your soul to change the world. It's the passion of your soul and the duty of your spirit to accept responsibility for big projects. Or, at the least and at worst, you will still not make that money despite all your stress, despite all your hustle. I leave you with this then. Stop hustling. I know you've been told, some, some people even say, my hustle, they have their own hustle. Hustle is toiling. It's for the weak. It's for the helpless and the slave. You don't have your hustle. Stop hustling. Position yourself. You are not designed to pursue your dreams. In fact, dreams are not designed to be pursued. Dreams are designed to gravitate towards you. 
That's why the Bible did not say, goodness and mercy shall be before you to be pursued all the days of your life. The Bible says, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Your dream is looking for you. Your dream is chasing you, but you are chasing your dream. You are not supposed to pursue your dream. You are supposed to position for your dreams. Destiny is location sensitive. Position yourself. Network yourself. Be in the right environment. Be selective about who you bring into your circle. Let people qualify for the investment of your time and your energy. Do it deliberately. Let them qualify. Have a protocol of accepting access into your life. When the devil wants to destroy you, he's going to send you somebody. And when God wants to lift you up, he's going to send you one. The difference in people is the difference in your life. Get stronger and get more selective about who you give access to. Access is a gift. Think like that and take responsibility at that level. It's only a matter of time we see you at the highest place possible in life. Thank you very much tonight. And God bless you. God bless you.